Okay, so we're on problem 38. Um, really, I guess the most difficult part of this problem is visualizing it. It says you lay a rectangular board on a horizontal floor and then tilt the board about one edge until it slopes at an angle theta with the horizontal. Choose your origin so that one of the two corners that touches the floor, the x-axis pointing along the bottom edge of the board, the y-axis pointing along the slope, and the z-axis being normal to the board. You create a frictionless pup, puck that is resting at the origin so that it slides across the board with an initial velocity in the x and the y, but none in the z. Uh, write Newton's second law using the given coordinates and then find how long it takes for the puck to return to the floor. Okay, so I was supposed to do this yesterday, but I got bogged down with the work, so okay, here we go. Here's our diagram. We have this tilted little rectangular board. Uh, the X and Y axis look a little weird, but that's how they wanted it. And all that's really going to do is flip how we think about things. So if we draw a free body diagram, you know, we would still have, we would still have our weight force going down, right? The only difference, and this is our uh, MG, this component we normally think of as being x we now think of being y so we would say uh the force of gravity in the y direction is mg sine theta because this is our theta here and the force due to gravity in the x direction is going to be mg cosine theta Okay, that seems straightforward enough. Um, if we do the sum of all forces in the y direction, that's equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. And what's our force? Well, we said it was just mg sine theta. If we divide out the m's, we find that the acceleration in the y direction is equal to just g times sine of theta. Okay, so we want to find... Okay, so we want to first uh, write to describe the position. Or I'm sorry, to find how long it takes for it to return to the floor. Okay, well, our forces and accelerations are constant. Our accelerations are constant. We can use our kinematics. We basically derived those earlier, so I'm not going to do it again. But essentially, your y is gonna be equal to v naught in the y direction times time plus one half a t squared. This acceleration's also in the y direction, and now we know acceleration. So we can say y is equal to y not y times t uh, should be no denoted that this is going to be a negative g. Right? Yeah, negative g. Sorry about that. Forgot the negative. And the reason being is because this is left of our origin. So if we plug that in, plus one half minus g sine theta times time squared then our y position is equal to v naught y t minus one half g sine of theta times time squared uh, okay so this describes our y position as a function of time that's important information now, we want to know when the puck returns to the floor, right? Or when it returns to floor level. So that's going to be, that will happen when y is equal to zero. That's when it returns back to our floor, when it slides back down. So if y is equal to zero, then zero is equal to v y naught t minus one half g sine of theta times time squared. 
and all we have to do here is solve for time. And we've done stuff similar to this before, so I'll go pretty quick through the algebra. Let's see, you'll get t equals, we have to multiply by 2. So 2 v naught y, and then divided by g sine of theta. Okay, so we have this time. This is the time it takes for it to go back to the bottom. Okay, well, we know that. And now we want to find how far it is from the origin when it does so. So when it returns to the origin, our y is going to be zero. I'm sorry, how far from the origin. So when it goes back to the ground, y is zero. And if we want to find how far it is from the origin, the only component we need to look at is the x component. And we know that the x component is going to be equal to uh, the velocity in the x direction times time. And we know how long it takes to get there. So x is equal to 2 v naught x v naught y all divided by g times sine of theta. So this is the time, t, that we found for it to return back to the ground, or ground level. And if we want to know how far it is from the origin, then all we have to do is plug this in. Plug that time that we found for it to get back to ground level into this equation for position for x. And there you go, that's more or less all there is to it. The only thing that's a little weird is how we think of the coordinate system. Uh, but other than that, I think it's pretty straightforward. The math isn't too bad, so.